Approximately 5% of the patients admitted to the emergency department have an altered state of consciousness. This could be the cause of acute or critical illness in the ICU, and healthcare professionals need to be equipped to deal with it. In this session, we shall discuss various approaches to assess the patient with altered consciousness and manage a patient with altered sensorium. By the end of this topic, you will be able to discuss the various approaches to assess and manage a patient with altered consciousness. Approximately 5% of the patients admitted to the emergency department have an altered state of consciousness. This could be the cause of acute or critical illness in the ICU. The clinical decision-making process and diagnosis are limited, as it is difficult to perform a neurological examination. The approach to be followed in a patient with an altered state of consciousness includes the following. Step 1. Rapidly determine the type of mental status change. Step 2. Administer life support measures if needed. Step 3 should be to perform an elaborate physical examination and get detailed history in order to diagnose the cause of the nervous system disorder and initiate treatment. Step 4 is to perform appropriate diagnostic and laboratory studies. Assessing the patient with altered consciousness differs for every patient. Assessment starts with assessing the verbal response. This includes determining the patient's orientation to time, person, and place. Alertness is measured by the ability of the patient to open the eyes spontaneously or to a stimulus. A comatose patient should be treated by application of the A, B, C, D, E approach. So what is the A, B, C, D, E approach? The A, B, C, D, E approach, this is a rapid bedside assessment of a deteriorating slash critically ill patient. It is the initial management of life-threatening conditions. A for airway, this is to establish the patency and assess the risk of deterioration in the patient's ability to protect their airways. B for breathing, this is designed to detect signs of respiratory distress or inadequate ventilation. C for circulation, the aim is to assess or determine the effectiveness of the cardiac output. D for disability, this is to assess the neurological status. This is done after ensuring that approaches A, B, C are thoroughly assessed. An E for exposure, this includes conducting a thorough examination of the patient's body. Neurological assessment prior to the neurological examination, a general physical examination is done to find evidence of any trauma, purpura, meningeal irritation, elevated intracranial pressure, and so on. The neurological examination includes motor responses to noxious stimuli, brainstem reflexes, and respiratory pattern. The motor responses include giving a stimulus in the form of applying pressure to the supraorbital ridge, nail beds and sternum. The human representative illustrates flexion to pain, with one illustrating lection with the left hand with either extension, with another illustrating flexion with the right and hyperextension in both lower limbs. The following image describes the motor response to pain. A. Left hemisphere lesion. The two figures illustrate localization of pain with the left hand and flexion that is left hand figure or extension that is right hand figure on the right. B. Subcortical, unilateral left sided lesion exerting a variable contralateral effect. The figures illustrate flexion to pain with the left hand with either extension that is right hand figure or flexion with the right and hyperextension in both lower limbs. C. Midbrain or upper pontine. A bilateral upper and lower limb extension response dot and lower pontine or medullary, a bilateral extensor upper limb posture with either flaccidity or minimal diminished flexor response in lower limbs. The testing of brainstem reflexes includes pupillary responses and ocular motility. Ocular motility is tested by holding the eyelids opened and observing the position of the eye in movements. In most comatose patients, position of both eyes is conjugate. Disconjugate position of the eye suggests a brainstem lesion. Vestibulo-ocular responses by doll's eyes maneuver help to elicit eye movements if they are not observed spontaneously. This should be avoided if dislocation of the cervical spine or a fracture is possible. In case of fracture, cold caloric testing is preferred only if the tympanic membrane is intact. In mechanically ventilated patients, tracheal suctioning helps to test the cough reflex. The evaluation of the respiratory pattern is not highly specific though it helps to determine the level of brain damage. 
Coma results from a diffuse interference with the arousal system or localized interference with one or more strategic sites. For the early management of coma, it is helpful to divide the causes into two broad categories. Structural, for example brainstem infarction, bilateral large damage of the hemispheres, non-structural, for example metabolic or toxic brain dysfunction, global cerebral ischemia, causes of coma the above table elicits the causes of coma. Please take a moment to study it. Standardized assessment The detailed neurological examination of coma should be assessed by validated scales. The Glasgow Coma Scale, or GCS, is the most widely used coma assessment scale. The above image describes the GCS based on the eye-opening response, verbal response, and motor response. The full outline of unresponsiveness score, or f.o.u.r, is a coma assessment scale which includes brainstem reflexes. The four components of brain function that is eye response, motor response, brainstem reflexes, and respiration pattern.